All right, today I'm going to be installing the Amarchi by DHH. You know, a lot of people have been talking about these, so I do definitely want to give it a try. And I do like the new menu system that he has come up with. I feel like that's a great uh, touch to, you know, especially for newcomers and experienced users, just an easy way to be able to edit and, you know, change your config without having to dive into too much uh, craziness. So I'm going to give this a shot today to go ahead and install it. Um, and I'm going to follow the manual here. So you guys are just going to have to go along with the, the ride with me. So we're just going to do this here. So I'm starting off scratch on a separate uh, drive. That's why you see that I'm on uh, Windows currently here. So I'm just going to start with the uh, get started portion here. So I'm going to download the Arch Linux ISO. So we'll go ahead and get that installed. So I'm actually going to skip over the Belina Etcher option because I have a, uh, a Ventoy drive here. So I'm just going to drop the ISO in here and boot into that so I can get it installed that way. And then um, as far as the, the next step, I am on a wired connection, so I won't have to worry about doing the Wi-Fi. And then I'll run the Arch install and then select all of the options that he has here. Um, this is actually a, a nice tutorial if you will um, on installing arch you know the proper way so this is a a good way to um, kind of follow along and do that and then it's just saying that it's designed to be on a, a disk encryption um, that's why he's saying you know follow these steps here uh, to do so i'll just wait for this arch iso to be done downloading and i'll be right back all right so that has downloaded so i'm going to go ahead and put this in the Ventoy drive there and then I'll just boot into that drive and finish the rest of this installation process. I'm actually going to pull up the instructions on another monitor here. All right, so that looks like it is finished. So I'll go ahead and restart. All right, so we're going to boot into the into a drive and then we're going to launch the Arch Linux ISO. All right, so I'm in the ISO, so now I just need to run the Arch install script. And then under mirrors, we're going to select my region. Go United States. And then under disk configuration, under partitioning, we're going to select default layout. And then we're going to select my drive, which is the WD black. And we're going to go with ButterFS. Yes. It says yes and use compression. So we're going to say yes. And then for encryption type, disencryption, it's going to be Lux. And then encryption password, I'm going to set one here. Make sure I just type that right. All right, so that's been set. And then we're going to go to host name. We can just keep it Arch Linux for now. And then authentication, we're going to do root password. I'm going to set my root password. And then under user account, we're going to do add a user, name it Don, and then user password, confirm user password, should be a super user, yes, confirm and exit. And then the next step is to go to applications. And then go audio, and we're going to go with Pipewire, and go back, and then under network configuration, 
copy ISO network, and then additional packages. We're going to get um, wget. And then time zone, we're going to set the time zone for my computer. Set it to EST and then automatic. All right, and so now we should be able to uh, go ahead and install. Yes, we'd like it to continue. And it's going to go ahead and do its thing and get everything installed. All right, so it's completed, and so we're going to select Reboot System. All right, so we are booting into the Arch Linux that we just installed here. All right, so all we need to do is log in with the credentials that we created. So I created it under Don and then my password. So now I am logged in. And now I can run the actual uh, script. So I'm going to do w uh, git and it's dash q o and it's an o, not a zero. He specifically said that in the uh, instructions there. So it's HTTPS colon omarchi dot org slash install bash. All right, and then it's going to ask me to put in my password. Doing an update of the system, and then it's going to start installing everything. It's been a pretty smooth process so far. All right, so it says uh, name, enter full name. Press enter, enter email. And it does say it'll take anywhere between five to 30 minutes, uh, depending on your internet. I do a pretty fast internet, so it shouldn't take uh, too crazy long, but uh, we'll let it run and be back once it's finished. All right, um, now it's actually, oh, nice. It's installing the NVIDIA drivers uh, for me, so that is nice. And so at the bottom here, it does say that there is an option to do um, a bear install. So you can do dash bear. Um, oh, marketing installation failed. You can retry. Interesting. Let me see what the error is here. Oh wow, it looks like it failed again. Again, trying to retrieve a file. So it sounds like it's more like a internet-based failure. Error installing repo packages. So let's just try to run it again. I probably should have done the bare um, install option to kind of skip a lot of these additional packages. I'm trying to get the uh, the real deal here so I can show you guys the full the full kit. So a lot of this stuff. It's already installed, so it should skip through, you know, majority of this and um, keep going to the next steps. Looks like Python terminal and Python 
terminal effects are in conflict. So it wants us to, I can do a sudo pacman dash r. So I can remove the Python, which is interesting because I had nothing really installed. So you would assume there would be no uh no dependency you know conflicts but all right so i went run ahead and removed that so i can run the script again one of these times we'll get in there all right so we're finally rebooting back into the system Nice, we are in. All right, cool. So we are uh, in the system here. Um, so we can just kind of go around and take a look at everything real quick now that it is actually installed. Um, so the installation process wasn't too bad. I did have to keep uh, restarting the install script a couple times. I think that was more of an internet issue than anything. I did have one package that I had to uh, remove because of a dependency error. Uh, but yeah, so this is the new option uh, that pops up here. So we have all apps, uh, learning, capture, toggle, style, setup, install, remove, update, about, and system. So you're able to go to install new applications and remove. So that's a, a nice uh, way. So I can actually, you know, run that. So if I want to install a web app or a package, I love the web app idea. That is actually pretty nice because I do use web apps quite a bit uh, for certain, you know, apps and things that I'd rather have as a separate window and not in my browser. So that's a nice tool to have and it looks like it's using the Chromium um, option so most things should uh, still work. And so if I go into package, this is where you can install uh, new packages. So if I wanted to install like OBS Studio, yeah, so OBS Studio is right there. And I believe it's uh, searching the AOR as well, uh, if I'm not mistaken, or it might just be the so it's super alt space is to actually launch that tool. That's pretty nice. You can go straight into apps, um, which I think super space. Yeah, super space goes straight in apps anyways. So you can see what apps are in here, you know, by default. So it's one password. I don't use one password, but that's nice to have um, at Basecamp, ChatGPT, Chromium, Docker, uh, yeah, Figma, um, GitHub. Uh, contacts, messages, photos. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff. LibreOffice. I use only Office, so I probably wouldn't install that myself. But um, LibreOffice is in there. NeoVim, um, OBS Studio, Signal, Spotify, WhatsApp, YouTube, and Zoom. Um, so they're all, all of the packages that come uh, by default. Me, myself, I would probably go with the bare option and install the ones I want. Or you can actually just go into um, the option here and then go into remove and packages and then you can search through all the packages here and just remove the ones you don't want. So I could remove, you know, one password if I didn't want that on, you know, my system anymore. So now it should show that one password still there. Um, there was two one password options there. So let me make sure, you know, both are removed. So go package. So it looks like that is finished. So let me see if, yep. So now 1Password is indeed gone, uh, which is a really nice feature um, to not have to, you know, have to type a bunch uh, to, to remove items and stuff like that. So it's a nice uh, gooey, way, gooey way of doing it, which I always appreciate. And then they do have a learning tab. Um, so key bindings, uh, you can look at all the different key bindings in here. I think that's super K if I'm not mistaken. Let me try it. Super K, yeah, so it's Super K um, can launch all the key bindings, which this is a nice feature to have so you can actually um, remember because there's there's times where I just I just forget. <laughs> and so um, nice way to just go look at them real quick instead of having to open up like a text editor or your terminal to go and, you know, find it. So that's really nice uh, to have that option uh, to be able to go and look at those key bindings real quick. You do have capture for like screenshot and color. And then do have a toggle as well. So you can toggle your idle lock, your top bar. So that's really nice to have, you know, idle lock and stuff. And uh, so if like I'm streaming or something, I can turn my idle off 
um, and then you do have style. So this is the really cool part that I like. Um, you can actually go into theme here and just change the theme just right out of the box. So they have a bunch of themes already in here, which is really nice. I can go cappuccino and boom, I got the uh, cappuccino. Oh, so that actually, what is his uh, uh, super enter is how to open the actual uh, terminal. Um, and I believe he has a styled uh, fast fats there. Um, so yeah, that's actually pretty, pretty nice. And it seems I can't actually exit this window. A super cute not to exit. Let's find out. <laughs> um, I definitely thought it was. I don't even know what hey is. So I don't know what I'm signing into over there. But um, let's see where... I probably already missed it. And you're probably saying, why is this guy it's still scrolling? Terminal. Close active window. Close active window is W and not Q. That's an interesting one. I um, would definitely change that if I was using my, this myself. I do like the animations that he has uh, active. Um, by default, I think that is a pretty nice animation style there. And let's see what we have up here in the corner. So this is just your, I believe, log out. It's your input. And then you have devices connected to Bluetooth, um, Ethernet, your audio. So audio uh, brings up this, which I have no audio devices actually connected to this uh, computer. So that would make sense why there's nothing showing there. And then we have this guy here, which is going to bring up uh, HTAP, which is uh, a pretty nice, you know, feature to have there. So yeah, so then you have the setup options. So you can set up audio, Bluetooth, monitors, keyboard, just change all of your uh, configs, um, you know, straight from here. So it just jumps right into it. So if I want to change some key bindings, um, I can jump right into it here. Oh, because it's my first time opening uh, NeoVim, so that's why it did all that. So let's try to... All right, yeah, so you can go in here and change what you want. So these are to launch all of the different apps. For your key bindings, it does not look like it has any of the actions. So you actually go into the actual um, Hyperland config, I believe, to to update those. I was just going to update the thing to go from W to Q to close apps, but that is not a problem. Uh, but yeah, so overall, I actually really like uh, the look and feel of this. And so install process was actually pretty smooth. You know, installing Arch, I had very um, detailed uh, description how to get in here. So yeah, so you can actually watch, I'll list his video um, down uh, below on, you know, all of the features and stuff that he has, you know, within his configuration here. So you can check that out. Uh, but otherwise, if you enjoy my content, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.